Hey guys, welcome back to the bonus segment of the Tales of the Trade podcast from Amaya FM. Our latest episode featured the dynamic team of the popular local improv theater, the Courtyard Playhouse. Needless to say, when you're around theater folks, things get a bit animated, especially when they narrated tales about reactions of eventual patrons when they first learned the prices of the brilliant workshops the Playhouse offers. Why is it so expensive? I want to know. <laughs> because the kids are being trained in a theatre by a oh, professional. Goodness. Kids are being trained in a what? In a theatre. In a theatre? Yes. Why does that cost more money? Because it's, it's, it's not a, a classroom, it's a theatre. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm not paying that. That's ridiculous. I could take him to Dubai Zoo for 11 dirhams. <laughs> that's exact, those are the exact conversations that we have. Yep, this bonus segment is going to be chock full of hilarious stories, but it'll also touch upon some of the valuable lessons learned along the way that can serve as inspiration for anyone starting their own entrepreneurial journey. I'm Gaia, producer of Tales of the Trade, and I'll be your host for this segment. How did the team handle the rather uncomfortable subject of value for money? But if you were to do an improv workshop somewhere else, it'd be cheaper than here, the most places. Maybe not Singapore. Because the real estate price is here and the cost of em- employers, and you, you have to first of all work out what your bottom line is and then how much you need to make. And, and the truth is uh, we do it the way that any other business would. What do, we, what do we put in and what do we need to make to keep going? We're never greedy. Uh, we always try and be benevolent, just like we are on stage with, with, in terms of pricing. But we are premium, though. If you go to a workshop, because I've taken lots around the world, you'll normally be in a church hall. Not sure about the instructors, the classes, whoever turns up. We, you come to the, you're, you're going to be training in a theatre with lights that are going to be used, with set props. You're going to be with someone who knows their onions, who does the work on stage four times a week here, who practices what they preach. You're going to be in small class sizes. The second you walk in, you get a, a 30 page improvisation. Uh, colour brochure. It's a premium product that we're, we're applying out so we price ourselves premium as well and all I, all I can say is I mean it's Dubai, all our workshops are full and we have lots of them. So it's something that people do value here because it's in such short supply. The minute that people do walk in and they see the venue and, and, and they get to experience the classes or get the feedback that we get from the people who have taken our classes or bought their kids here it's an immediate, they they understand it immediately. The work experience program that we have, I mean, it's a volunteer program while also being offering work experience. And we'll have kids here three nights a week helping with front of house, learning how to do lights and sound, uh, doing sonography, and then performing. Some of them get to perform with the adults. With the nature of improv and theatre in general, the audience is just as much a part of the performance as the actors on stage. Kemsley shared some beautiful instances of how the magic of theatre lies in the immediacy of the connection between the performers and the audience. We do Valentine's show every year and it, you know, people remember it years later. We ask any members of the audience to come down and they'll tell us there how they met and then we'll have our actors play it out. And, uh, you know, sometimes it gets really quite emotional. And, you know, we've had instances where people have, have spoken about, uh, you know, death of family members. And, um, you know, you know, our actors have sensitively, you know, played scenes where their, I don't know, their father is, um, is, is trying to get in to the gates of heaven and has to answer several questions and stuff. And it's, it's really, it's exciting to come to theatre where you don't know what's going to happen that night. Yeah, and sometimes you come and it's a duff night. <laughs> And that's the nature of improvisation. Uh, and sometimes it might not be great. I, hope, I would hope it's always quite entertaining and fun. But once in a while, you have a magic show here. Uh, not literally magic, but a show that, that feels magic. And that's, that's what needs to be nurtured here, just to keep that, um, make sure that artistically it's on, it's, uh, it, we're on our toes. The culture of critiquing is essential to the growth of any performance arts or art scene in a region. We discuss why this isn't the case in our region and how it affects the scene. There's no, virtually no critique in Dubai for you know any sort of grassroots art scene. Um, yeah, because there's not, it's not big enough. 
<laughs> you're going to be critiquing two theatres, you know? Uh, and so it really, a couple of people have tried it, but it really just fizzled out. The people who enjoy coming to this theatre are the, the people who, um, I don't know, there's a sense of family about this particular theatre, uh, the way it's kitted out, hopefully the experience when you walk in, right to when you leave. I think that's actually what gets them. Um, and then the people who take the workshops, they're the ones who start critiquing the shows that we do. So people who are actively involved being on stage uh, or doing the scenography for us or the lighting, they start to develop a, a relationship with the art and then start critiquing it. Hey, that was a good show tonight, right? Well, why was that a good show? Oh, that show didn't work tonight. That's why. Um, yeah, but the scene's just too small. We touched upon a few funny anecdotes about how they hire the right people at the theatre, but there was so much more where that came from. Oh, but sifting through them, some of them are honestly hilarious. Someone did a graph of their career development for me in a graph with no other details. So it just said career development and had like a line <laughs> with, against time that went up and down. <laughs> just a line, but no other details. So it was just her perception of our career development had gone. Some of the interviews were really fun, funny as well, weren't they? You weren't there when we had the interview with the girl who spoke to spirits. And, they yeah. said to me, don't shortlist. Don't shortlist. I said, no, she likes animals. She'll fit in here. We've got two or three cats, right? And we've got a dog and a turtle, a theatre turtle. So if you... You have to like animals. Our, all our charity... We give the charity to all animal charities. Dolphin. You have to like animals. So I shoehorned this person in on the basis that she liked animals. And she was mental. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> She's that... She was very, very, very lovely, but, but on, on, in, a, in an interesting way. <laughs> the, the funny thing was that we, we, I think we spoke about the job for maybe five minutes, and then, but we, I spoke to her for an hour, and it was all about her cats and her dogs and her spirits that she speaks to. It was, it was so interesting. It was phenomenal. I didn't want to stop speaking to her because it was just so interesting. But I wanted to call everyone else in. <laughs> I was like, come, join one of the things that I love about the theatre is that we're able to experience real life flesh and blood performers right there in front of your eyes and not on a screen. And to enjoy a performance and respect the sanctity of the theatre, there's this unspoken and completely rational etiquette to be followed. But it's not always easy to get everyone to abide by the rules. We ban all the electronics like that banned, really, from the auditorium. Although some people don't like it when you, when you tell them off. Yeah. Once we had the ministry in and Kylie went and hit one of them on the shoulder uh, when she had, and he had his phone out and he fined us. Nice one. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> I just pushed his phone down and I can said, you please, imagine? can you put your phone away? A ministry official. <laughs> he was filming, so... You're not allowed to film the shows, yeah. So I just kindly asked him to put it away. He didn't, so I pushed it down. And then we got a fine. <laughs> Our fifth fine. This is a totally different context to the conversation about you guys getting shut, getting fined. <laughs> <laughs> now there's culpability involved. Although these challenges can be fertile ground for comedy, the way the Courtyard Playhouse has carved its niche is no joke. We asked them about whether finding a niche, in their case the niche being improv, was essential to finding success. If anyone's listening and thinking about um, uh, going into business, don't be cowardly. Now I know, let me put that into context. When we were putting this together, we had a partner who wanted to come in as a third hand. Um, and, and they were like, well, let's make it a, a versatile black box space that can be used. And, you know, we just we just felt very strongly that, no, if you've got an idea, you've got to go for it. It's got to be dedicated. So that's why we went for the fixed seating. There were no half measures. You know, we just we decided, yeah. Let's do this. And then later on, we decided improvisation and we stuck with it. And that was a big decision. You're a theatre, but you don't do drama. No nope, improvisation. So I'd agree absolutely with what you said. Choose a niche area, stick to it. No half measures. It's kind of cowardly, isn't it? It's hedging your, hedging your bets a bit. Let's make it versatile, just in case the business, first business doesn't work. Maybe the se second one might. Or, yeah. Um, I think know what you are, know what your identity is. That's it. Be that. <laughs> Be what you are. Nothing sums the Courtyard Playhouse better than that sentence. Their authenticity and clarity of mission lies at the very core of their success and why they have firmly planted themselves in the community. We hope that the tale of this beloved theatre not only brought you some laughs, but shed light on how pivotal it is to streamline your focus. Do one thing brilliantly rather than stretching yourself too thin trying too many things, and how to find your niche and then dominate it. 
Thank you for listening and tune in on December 18th for a very Merry Christmas special of Tales of the Trade. You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and Ankami as well. Just search for Tales of the Trade wherever you like to listen. So many tales to be told, so many stories to be shared. Just pull up a chair and join the conversation.